One inverter is good, but two working together takes it to a whole new level. I'm Ed, and I am the DIY Solar Farmer. Stay tuned. So what do we have here? Two Solus S6 11.4 kilowatt inverters wired and configured to run in parallel. One is the master and one is a slave. In this configuration, they should be capable of 23 kilowatts and we're gonna find out. This will be the first video in a series. Today will be an overview of the connections and configuration. Then for a little bonus, we're gonna make a 10 kilowatt load bank out of an old electric oven to do our shakeout testing with. All right, let's get to it. All right, let's go over the wiring in the Solus S6. It's basically all the same for one or two units with the exception of back here you've got a Cat5 cable right there. And this being the, the slave, it's in the parallel out port. The bottom is the parallel out, the top port is the parallel in. So the master, you plug it in the parallel in. The slave, you want to go parallel out. And that's really the only difference in, in the wiring. Now to combine the power out of the backup port, you're going to come out the backup port and into another breaker panel. This breaker panel, you're going to have two breakers, one for the master and one for the slave. All right, this is how you're going to combine it. The power out is going to be from the other breakers. I've got 220 amp 110 breakers in here right now and a 100 amp 240 breaker. All right, let's go over the settings. I've got my cheat sheet here so I don't miss anything. And I'm just going to read from it. If that's okay. Okay, so Solus S6 parallel sync setting. To set up the Solus S6 for parallel synchronization, you must establish a master slave communication network and configure specific settings for each inverter using the local Solus Cloud app. So you're going to get your phone and you're going to connect to the uh, Bluetooth on the unit and get into the Solus Cloud app. The parallel sync setting ensures the master inverter's operational parameters automatically apply to the slave inverters. So once these settings are set, whatever you set on the master automatically gets transferred over to the slave. You don't do any more settings on the slave after this. Okay, here's some prerequisites. You have to use identical models. You can't use like a, an 11.4 and a 6 kilowatt. They both have to be 11.4 kilowatt inverters. Firmware. All inverters must have the same firmware version before beginning the process. That's very important. That, that messed me up for a little while because I, I could have swore that both inverters had the same firmware, but apparently I was mistaken and it, <laughs> it didn't work. Um, I thought there was a problem with the communication cables and, but it, it was just the firmware version. So after I did that update, everything worked fine. Communication cables ensure the RJ45 CAN communication cables are properly daisy chained. All right, we went through that already. Dip switches. There's a set of dip switches. I'll put a picture up on the board and the, the top two need to be set a specific way. On the master and the last slave, the dip switches have to be on on both of them. Okay, step one, configure the slave inverters. Starting with the last inverter in the chain and working your way back. So you're gonna start with the last inverter, the last slave, and work your way back to the master. Access the settings menu in the app and select parallel settings. Set the parallel mode to parallel. Assign a unique address ID to each slave inverter starting from two up to the maximum number of inverters. So this slave is number two and the master is number one. Set the manual master slave setting to slave. Set the phase setting to either single phase or phase ABC as appropriate and phase ABC only applies if you're setting this up for three phase. Otherwise you're going to set to single phase. Enter the total number of inverters in your parallel setup. So 
this set up, I've got to set the parallel sink to lock. After all slave inverters are set, configure the master inverter. Connect to the master inverter via the Solus Cloud app again. Navigate to parallel settings. Set the address ID to 1. Set the manual master slave setting to master. Set the phase setting to the correct configuration. Set the total number of inverters. Set the parallel sync to locked. This will automatically push the master's parameters to all slave inverters. One thing I got to say before you begin everything, you want to make sure that all the configurations are the same. Make sure the configuration is set up exactly the same on both inverters. Connect the meter and data logger only to the master inverter. On the slave set meter mode to no meter. So you only need the meter if you're going to use the meter if you're on grid or like my situation, I'm quasi on grid. I've got my own micro grid here. My main inverter in the, in the solar shed is providing the 60 hertz synchronization uh, to run these two inverters. So they, they think they're on grid, but they're actually off grid. All right, so you only need one meter connected to the master. You don't put a meter on the slaves. Grounding, ensure all inverters are connected to the same ground point. And if you experience any issues, check the parallel communication cables for loose connections and ensure dip switch settings are correct. Now, one thing I want to say about the communications cable, the RJ45 cable, you want to use the one that came with the inverters because that one is shielded. Can communications, if it picks up any noise, it can really mess you up. When you, when you first get the inverter, put that cable in a safe spot so you, you know where it is. All right, and that's, that's it for the, uh, for the settings. All right, this one's gone way too long already, so we're going to do the DIY load bank in the next video. Again, if you like this kind of content, sure would appreciate a like and a subscribe. And don't forget, if you're looking for any solar stuff, we've got the Signature Solar $50 discount coupon code down in the description. As always, appreciate you and have a good one. Adios.